Now, those of you who spent all your time Googling things probably know that I spoke at RacketCon 2013 and in passing said that one of my least favorite programming languages is JavaScript. And in fact, at the 2014 RacketCon, we had a keynote speaker, I won't say his name, he's a very nice man, but he said, you know what, maybe a great idea for Racket would be to sort of like bridge the gap with JavaScript somehow. And I said, oh man, who would do that? Well, today we have our answer. Vishesh Yadav is going to talk to us about Racket Script, a way of going from Racket to JavaScript. So Racket Script, this is Racket Script. Uh, it takes Racket source programs and translates them to JavaScript. It's a very standard uh, compiler. Only one thing to note here is that it's not an end-to-end -end compiler. What it does is it takes, uh, it uh, leverages the Racket infrastructure to uh, pass the Racket source files, expand these Racket programs to their core forms, and then translate them to ES6. And because ES6 is not uh, uh, fully supported by browsers and uh, Node.js, you need Babel or Tresu to translate uh, them to ES5, something that is deployable. So if you ever try to uh, see if you uh, look for compilers uh, to uh, compile Racket to JavaScript, you may have stumbled upon Whale Song, and you must be wondering, why am I doing this again? <laughs> I mean, seriously, why, right? Uh, so to answer that question, we'll go through a quick demo. Uh, damn it. All right. So here's Whale Song, and it's a, let's try to run a game called Tetris, OK? Uh, this is small one, right? Uh, runs fine. And in this one, we just uh, made the board bigger and block smaller, OK? And on the side, you could see uh, these uh, the frame rate, and you'll see that it's almost dropping to you know to uh, the frame rate is dropping right quite a lot. It it will drop. Okay, now we are at right three four whatever. So yeah, Whale Song has performance problems, and this is quite well known. And I'll give a demo on how Racket Script does on the same thing. Tetris, and I'll make the block size same for 70, 80, whatever that was for. Uh, all right, it's going to take a while to compile it. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Now if you see the frame rate, you'll see that we're almost getting 60 FPS, right? All right, so that's pretty good, right? But how did I do that? So it turns out there's no sorcery or ma uh, black magic involved. In fact, if anything, what I did, it, I cheated. <laughs> Consider this graph where if you're trying to compile some language, where on the bottom we have JavaScript, and on the top we have, you know, completely preserving the semantics. And on the horizontal axis, we are saying, okay, how does this perform as compared to that dimension, right? As compared to that dimension. So Whale Song started right at the top, uh, faithfully uh, preserving all the semantics of Racket. And it didn't perform very well in terms of uh, perform very well. And they tried to push it forward, but that, that didn't go, uh, they didn't go very far. What we did was, we started out from that gray area, which is a bit ahead of the acceptable performance, and we tried to push up towards preserving more semantics and having a reasonable performance. But that's not it. Uh, what we also tr avoided doing uh, that is instead of producing code like this in terms of JavaScript, this is a code for factorial, by the way. Good luck figuring out <laughs> how it's working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we produced something like this. Uh, and this is not only human readable, but your tools uh, such as your prof uh, JavaScript profiler, Chrome debugger, they are very happy to see, look into this code. So actually, if you try to uh, uh, run profiler on the Wilson program, the Chrome crashes. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever evaluations I did, I did it on Firefox. So that's one thing where 
Firefox are useful for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to sum up, I lied. RacketScript is not a racket to JavaScript compiler. It compiles something that is kind of racket, but not exactly racket. So, and here's what, uh, yeah. So here's the list of features that we implement. In terms of data structures, we kind of uh, implement all uh, widely used data structure, including pairs, structures, vectors, hashes. Uh, in terms of language, variadic, uh, variadic functions, modules, and few things we cannot implement properly, but we do try to approximate, as in we do continuation marks. And because we could do con continuation marks, we could support parameters and exceptions. And you'll see proper tail cause is both in approximates and not supported, because what we do is we just convert uh, self tail cause to loops. But if we have some mutually recursive programs, uh, like even odd thing, uh, it would get into Stack Overflow. Uh, among non -su uh, not supported features, the biggest one is probably continuations and proper tail calls. And I'm not that worried about proper tail calls because ES6 technically is supposed to have proper tail calls, and Safari already implemented that. And uh, hopefully, we'll have that soon. Uh, in terms of continuation, uh, I'm not that much worried right now. <laughs> so let's see uh, some of the features of Racket Script. Uh, this is Racket Script Playground, where you could, you know, try out Racket Script. Uh, so each Racket program, uh, uh, each Racket module translates to the ES6 module. And over here we have a Racket program which does all re uh, some fancy uh, provide stuff, and you'll see that it uh, nicely translates to j uh, ES6 exports. Uh, next, I'll give you an example for. Quick sort, right. So in this quick sort example, we have match because we are leveraging the racket infrastructure. We could actually uh, uh, trans um, expand this match. Uh, and uh, this partition, you'll see that it's a self, uh, self recursive. So this can potentially be translated to loops. And this is what exactly it does over here. Uh, all right. Uh, here's another example, uh, which is another advantage of using the racket infrastructure that you, we could compile the whole racket base, not whole racket base, but uh, all the useful parts, and at least the ones I use frequently. So here's an example for uh, keyword arguments. Uh, we do uh, support quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of feature, uh, structure features. For example, in this case, you'll see we do. Uh, the structure guards and structure properties. Even your structures are applicable, so uh, that compiles well. And you could see the output here, here by the way. Uh, all right. So, and you could also use the language extensions. For example, uh, here is a debug language extension, right? And what it does, it prints out whatever it's tagged by this. And if you compile and run. All right, so you could see uh, uh, the reader extension uh, worked quite well with this, uh, although there's nothing great about uh, racket script in this case, it's thanks to racket itself. <laughs> so uh, who, uh, among our users, we have at least one user who, oh my god, <laughs> I cannot type and talk at the same time. Uh, All right, so we have at least one user who is using Racket Script to demo their project. It's a, a project called Waxi, and it was supported by uh, a person called Kleb. Uh, he is a Racket, uh, a Racket Script contributor, and Waxi is a parser generator. And uh, what they did was they put, um, uh, they have this grammar, and they trans, uh, you have this input, and it produces a uh, syntax tree for abstract tree for this uh, input, and it's it's pretty cool that they do that. Uh, so yeah, at least at least we have one user. <laughs> uh, but that's not it. Uh, racket script doesn't only want to be a demo box for arbitrary application uh, racket programs. We also want to write real programs in racket script. 
right? So for that to happen, we do uh, provide the FFI. Oh, uh, where's mini Canron? I was trying it out. So mini Canron works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if any more complicated programs would survive this, but yeah, at least this worked. Uh, okay. So here's an overview for our FFI. In this example, we are using jQuery. Uh, so you'll see this hash JS star. What it does is it picks up uh, uh, the variable names from uh, JavaScript environment uh, without checking whether it actually exists. But if you remove this star, it will actually check if it exists, whatever. Uh, and over here, we, are, we have this function which translates these uh, uh, S expressions to something that jQuery understands, jQuery objects. And uh, in this case, we, uh, we have this macro, this which can translate to the uh, typical JavaScript chaining operation. Let me see if we can find this. Uh, I'll give up on that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you'll notice that in this case, we are doing, uh, for the strings, we have also this uh, hash JS in front of strings. And we kind of have to do that because uh, JavaScript doesn't do Unicode properly. So for... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, so if we have non BMP characters, for example, some emoji, uh, and do a string length uh, on J in JavaScript, it will return string length as two. So to get over that problem, uh, we have to implement our own uh, Unicode uh, encoder. And we have to wrap this. And if you want to produce the proper JavaScript uh, strings, you have to do this. Uh, yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> uh, Right. We also uh, provide some forms so that you could uh, produce these uh, uh, JavaScript literals. Uh, for example, this object in this uh, arrays and objects. Uh, and using this, uh, using this and a couple more features, uh, you could do quite a lot, it turns out. Uh, for in racket script, what we use is, uh, we have used it to write the racket runtime run itself. So the cold kernel primitives is written in the racket script FFI. Uh, also, if you, uh, if, if I just uh, um, demoed the Tetris program, right? So I'll show you one more game, uh, which is Flappy Birds Run. So the whole HTTP, um, uh, the this whole game engine and the image library is also written in uh, Racket Script. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Couple days ago, I got a, uh, uh, a ticket on the, the playground uh, uh, issues page that uh, this game is too hard. You have to make it easy. Uh, all right. So that's pretty much it from FFI side. Uh, so regarding evaluations, uh, this is quite old evaluation because a lot of things changed uh, since I did that evaluation. I didn't get a chance to run them through. But uh, more specifically, uh, uh, since we did this evaluation, uh, we have started using the racket base library. And we do arity checking. So uh, some of this are not as good as it shows up over here, over here, but it's not that bad as well. For example, if you see, look at the compile size, uh, right now it's like five times, but now it's almost half of that size. Uh, but the thing to note here is that the tools such as minifiers and all, they work pretty, pretty well with racket script. So even though we are producing larger output, I think we could do better uh, if we put some effort into that. In terms of FPS, uh, you'll consistently see that racket scripts gives you better FPS. And there's another uh, uh, thing we know, uh, calculate is idle time, which is uh, the amount of time that is free for in the browser. Uh, that is, browser not doing that much work. So in, in Whale Song, you'll see that uh, it's kind of busy when trying to do uh, uh, run programs. So in general, uh, we found that we are getting better FPS or uh, big bang programs, less compile size, more idle time, which means more responsiveness and better result from a tool. So in terms of future work, uh, we kind of pushing in three directions. Uh, one is we want to support more of Racket. Uh, we definitely need to have contracts because, because that is pushing us back from supporting more Racket libraries. 
uh, we definitely need more optimization to reduce the compile size and perhaps performance. Uh, and in terms of productivity, it's, uh, it's important for RacketScript. Uh, for example, if, if you looked at the RacketScript playground, it was kind of, it was slow, uh, the compilation was slow, and we want to make that really faster. Uh, and we want uh, a nice integration with the, uh, uh, the JavaScript ecosystem, for example, the Chrome debugger using source maps so that you could just add breakpoints on the racket code and it works. So I think that's all I got. Uh, try racket script on this. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub, so you could try it online over there. And I can take questions now. Couple questions for Vishesh. That's amazing. Dude, you've completely changed my mind about JavaScript. You found JavaScript the good parts. It's in Racket. All right, <laughs> question. So the question is if we can apply Clojure compiler or Facebook symbolic compiler on Racket script. And I think we can. We already tried to apply the Clojure compiler. We, uh, so Clojure compiler has different modes, right? Uh, it has advanced mode, it has normal mode. Uh, we haven't tried the advanced mode because you have to uh, uh, produce JavaScript which follows certain rules. Uh, we haven't looked into that, but I don't see why it can't be done. We just didn't get into it. Uh, but there are modes where you could try uh, several uh, uh, closure compiler in the racket sequence online line uh, compiler. You could try uh, certain flags which does uh, apply the closure compiler web pack, web pack. Yeah, that kind of stuff. One more quick question. Sure. Uh, how do you translate concurrency from closure? Is that not important? Uh, we are not doing that right now. Uh, but we are planning to do uh, async. Uh, await thing. Okay, so it'll be more like you have FFI JavaScript promises sort of stuff than yeah. translate them in friends. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that would be very expensive because you'll have to implement trampoline and that kind of stuff. Wonderful. Thank you. Another hand for Vishesh. Yeah. Uh,